Today on the newscast, now more than ever, it's a region that Israel cannot afford to give up. Where is it and why did recent comments from a top Biden administration official force Israel to restate its permanent sovereignty over this area? Find out coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. I was very glad to see earlier this month that the U.S. Senate voted by a count of 97 to 3 that the U.S. Embassy will remain in Jerusalem permanently. Now, President Trump, of course, moved the embassy to Jerusalem in May 2018 to the ancient and ancestral capital of the state of Israel where it belongs but there were some concerns that when Joe Biden took office, he may try to reverse course there and move the embassy yet again out of Jerusalem. Now, thankfully, in the months prior to him taking office, he and his administration officials said, look, we're going to keep the embassy in Jerusalem. They weren't happy about it, mind you, but I guess they didn't want to stir a hornet's nest. And also, of course, we had this Senate vote, a bipartisan vote, very rare, again, 97 to 3, in favor of keeping the embassy in Jerusalem. So that's great, but Jerusalem will, in some form or fashion, folks, eventually be, I hate to frame it like this or word it like this, on the table in the future. I'm talking about the Biden administration's desire to kickstart the two-state solution talks once again, and every, uh, according to, or at least judging by, every previous U.S. administration, judging by what Europe, the European Union wants, what the U.N. wants, all of them want to give half of Jerusalem to the Palestinians, the eastern half in particular, to the Palestinians as the capital of a future Palestinian state. So the story is to be continued here when it comes to Jerusalem. Of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said, hey, Jerusalem will never be divided again. Many Israeli leaders have said that. We'll see what comes down the pike. Also, of course, when we're talking about dividing land and Israel giving up land, I think of Judea and Samaria, the biblical heartland, also known as the West Bank, in the various peace plan incarnations over the past few decades, every one of them entailed Israel giving up a good chunk of that land in Judea and Samaria, where I believe over 500,000 Jews live now in Judea and Samaria. So that also is coming, that discussion. But what about the Golan Heights? Now, folks, it's a region you don't hear much about um, in terms of Israel possibly giving it up because it would be madness to give up the Golan Heights, as I'm about to lay out. This is to the, I guess you would say the northeast, northeastern Israel, right along the Syrian border, above the Sea of Galilee, and it is the ultimate strategic area in Israel. Now, no one has talked about giving up the Golan in any seriousness in years. Israel took control of the region in 1967, defeating Syria in the Six-Day War, of course, and since then, look, the Golan is the high ground. Whoever controls the Golan Heights looks down on the Sea of Galilee and Israeli communities in the Galilee region, in the Golan region. It is crucial, vital, and strategic. Again, if you control the Golan, you have the upper hand in any future conflict. Thankfully, Israel has controlled it for nearly 54 years. And really, there's been a uh, Israeli presence, a Jewish presence in that region going back over 2,000 years. One of the amazing things is that there have been at least 30 ancient synagogues, the rema remains of 30 ancient synagogues discovered in the Golan Heights uh, over the past few years by Israeli archaeologists. So obviously Israel has a long-time presence and claim in that region. And like I said, no-brainer, they must keep it. We'll talk about why from a security perspective a bit more in a second, but why am I bringing up the Golan? Because it was in the headlines a few weeks ago, vis-a-vis -vis the Biden administration. Now, the new Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, gave an interview to Wolf Blitzer of CNN. Blitzer asked Blinken about the Golan Heights. Now, remember, I talked about President Trump moving the embassy, making history, obviously, in May 2018. Also, in March 2019, almost two years ago, 
another major move that some people I have spoken to, some Israelis, say, hey, Eric, that was as big, if not bigger, than even moving the embassy to Jerusalem. And that, that's saying something, right? President Trump in March 2019 recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. He sent out a tweet, of course, and said, look, Israel controls the Golan. That's that. The Golan is Israeli territory. This is me saying it. It always has been. And the Israelis are saying it always will be. But Anthony Blinken was pressed about this by Wolf Blitzer earlier this month. And here's what Anthony Blinken had to say. He said that while the Golan, quote, remains of real importance to Israel's security, legal questions are something else. And over time, if the situation were to change in Syria, that's something the Biden administration would look at. But we are nowhere near that. So basically, he was non-committal about Israel's permanent control over the Golan. He's saying, hey, right now, Israel needs it for security purposes. But in the long term, maybe this is negotiable if the situation changes. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu, his office came out the very next day and said, the Golan is Israel's forever. No matter what happens, we will never give up the Golan Heights. Of course, this is common sense if you know the region and you know the dynamics, but we live in an age when common sense is not so common. But the fact that the Israeli prime minister felt compelled to respond to these comments by Anthony Blinken tells you something. The Biden administration, just as the Obama administration before it, does not see the Golan as a permanent part of Israel. They see that as occupied Israeli territory, and they see it as perhaps open for negotiation one day. I've been on the Golan Heights many times. Again, it's one of my favorite places in Israel, and I've reported there frequently for the Watchman TV show. We wanted to go real quick to two clips from the Golan to give you an idea of what it's like, what the Golan looks like, and why it is so important for Israel to keep. The first clip, short clip, with a good friend of mine, IDF Israel Defense Forces Reserve Major Elliot Chodoff. We're on the Golan together looking at Syria. We're right there, folks, staring out into Syria. And the second clip is from a close confidant of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Zaki Hanegbi. He's a member of the Knesset. Uh, he and I were also on the Golan Heights, and he had some very interesting comments from a biblical perspective regarding the importance of the Golan Heights. Take a look. Here we have Fatah Hasham. They used to call themselves Jam Hat al-Nusra. They're also known as... Also known as Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Okay. We're, we're staring here, at... Here, Jubat al-Khashib, the village that you can see here next to the quarry, is under their control. Folks, there's Al-Qaeda, just over the horizon. Here. And and down here. Down and here, down the, here. The village that you see down here in the valley, Hananebe, is in their hands as well. Just north of Jubat al-Khashib, is a village, El Khadr, that's in the hands of Hezbollah. It's a Druze pro-regime village. So here we have Hezbollah, we have Al Qaeda, we had ISIS. ISIS a little further south. Yeah. 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 Russia and Iran lurking, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. All at Israel's doorstep. A terrorist buffet. Yes. The world's worst actors have gathered in one place. Oh, and by the way, right across the border from the Jewish state. Exactly. It's a mountainous region, the Golan. It borders Syria, one of the most chaotic places on Earth. But when you have the Golan from a security perspective, it seems that you have the high ground, right? You think of the 1967, 1973 battles that were fought up here between Israel and Syria. Uh, controlling the Golan just seems like a strategic benefit for Israel. Yes, it's a necessity. It's a crucial strategic advantage over enemies that are still uh, we share our demise, and you mentioned the 1973 war, uh, the Yom Kippur War. 177 Israeli tanks were able to uh, challenge 1,500 Syrian uh, tanks and were able to hold them for several days till we brought all our army in and, uh, and won yeah. this war. And this is only because of the the geography, the to topography, and of course, the Israeli spirit. You know, yeah. they say in the Bible, uh, Prophet Jeremiah quoted the Lord saying that uh, out of the north, an evil shall break forth uh, 
upon all the inhabitants yeah. of the land. And this is not only a virtual prophecy, this is yeah. our strategic reality. The enemies that wish our disappearance will come from the north. So we have to stay here, hold on to this land and yeah. make sure that if it happens, if we won't be able to deter them, yeah. we'll be able to win over them. The threat will come from the north. Folks, that's exactly what we have been telling you here on the Watchman Newscast over the past few months, that a great northern war is coming that will pit Israel against the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, and their various radical allies in southern Lebanon and in Syria. It's a question not of if, but when, according to Israeli defense officials. We will keep watching it for you here on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.